now listening to The Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. Episode 16, Stress, It's Killing Us. And now, Dr. Taylor Crick. All right, welcome to The Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, bringing you the most cutting-edge information available on real health today. And I'm excited about today's episode and the next few episodes coming up after this because we are talking about the number one killer in the world. And I'm not talking about heart disease. I'm not talking about cancer. I'm not talking about diabetes. I'm talking about something that is at the core and at the root of all of these disease processes and many more. This along with inflammation, but this can even cause inflammation. So this is really at the root of so many of our disease processes that are ravaging our country and the world today. And that topic is called stress. Okay, so everybody would agree that stress is killing us. And in fact, when they've surveyed people, what they found is that, you know, 25% of us, one out of four, would rate our stress at an extremely high level. That's an eight out of 10 or above, 10 being the most stressed, one being the least. 25% of us would rate an eight or above. But then another 50% of us would say that we are at least in the moderate stress level. And so that's a four to seven in the four to seven out of 10 range. So 75% of our population when they survey us will be at four out of 10 or above. So we are incredibly stressed today. And so it is important that we understand not only what is causing this stress, what you can do about the stress, but really understanding what the long-term repercussions are of being stressed, of being in a stressful state, what that can do to you. Because that can not only lead to cancer, lead to heart disease, lead to diabetes, lead to weight gain, lead to inflammation, also lead to neurodegenerative decline or cognitive decline or things like Alzheimer's, uh, can lead to almost every disease process that we're seeing today, stress plays a role. And so I'm excited to teach you today about how that happens, why that happens, so that you can change the way that you're responding to stress and change the way that you are addressing the stress response, how often it's happening, and really take some rocks out of your backpack. Even if you've never heard that concept before, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But doesn't that sound good to take some rocks out of your backpack? That's exactly what we're going to talk about. But my number one goal with today's episode is to really get you to understand what is happening with stress, why it's such a concern, and really start to change the way that you think about it. And not just wish, oh, I have, I wish I had no stress. Because stress doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily a bad thing in and of itself, but change the way that you think about it so you can manage your stress so that you know what things are adding rocks to your backpacks, what, what things are giving you, causing you a stress response, and you can actively and consciously take some action steps to decrease that. So if you're joining us for the first time, like I said, my name is Dr. Taylor Crick. I'm the owner and operator of Align Utah. I'm a chiropractic physician, wellness physician here in Salt Lake City, Utah. And each and every episode, we are talking to you about real health through the five essentials of maximized living. And so what those are, because we're going to get into them a little bit later, is essential number one, maximizing your mindset. Okay, so that's huge when it comes to stress. That's maximizing your relationships. That's minimizing your stress. That's you know time management. But it's also changing the way that you view and you manage your health by looking a few more layers deep into things, looking at what is this causing, what else could this be affecting, and looking for cause rather than just looking for cover up. Okay, so that's changing the way that you view and manage your health with essential number one, maximizing your mind. Essential number two is maximizing your nerve supply. And you brought your body has a nerve supply that runs and controls and coordinates every single function in the body. So a lot of the things we're going to be talking about today with the stress response are all regulated and modulated by this immune or by this nervous system. Excuse me. The nervous system regulates the immune system. It regulates the endocrine system. It regulates every system. That's your body's nerve supply. That's also the spine. The, the spine is what controls or what surrounds and protects this system that's controlling everything else. So that's chiropractic. That's making sure that your spine is healthy, making sure that your spine can move and that it is subluxation free because subluxation, joint dysfunction, spinal dysfunction is actually a stressor in and of itself. It adds a rock to your backpack. 
Essential number three is your nutrition, maximizing your quality nutrients, eating foods that are going to move your body in a healthier direction rather than foods that will move your body in a sicker direction. And that's a big stressor. You know, stressors cannot they're not all going to be emotional. They're not all going to be mental. You can have mental, emotional stress. You can have physical stress like a car accident or like sitting on your butt all day causing your spine to rot and degenerate and decay. Or you can also have physical, chemical, emotional. Uh, so that can also be a chemical stress like from your food supply or from your toxins, from GMOs, from things like that. Essential number four though is exercising. Your body has to be moving. That decreases your stress load, takes rocks out of your backpack, where the opposite, sitting on your butt doing nothing, actually makes it worse. So that's exercise. That is essential. That is essential number four. And number five is minimizing your exposures to toxins. Okay, so that's chemical stress. That is a huge one. And by minimizing your exposures to toxins, you're cutting down on your stress load. That's what we're going to be talking about. I just want to give props right away to Dr. James Chestnut because I've already said a few times, I'm going to talk about him a little bit later, but you know, I've already said a few times rocks in your backpack. That is not my term. I heard that from him. And I'm going to explain exactly what that means. But the first thing that I want to talk about today is the stress response. Okay, what is the stress response? What do we mean when we say that? And what we mean is, you know, your body has an, what's called an autonomic nervous system. Okay, that's what controls a lot of the things that you don't have to think about. Okay, and of that autonomic nervous system, there are two separate departments of that nervous system. There's one called the sympathetic that's your fight or flight. Okay, we're going to say that word a lot, fight or flight, your sympathetic nervous system. The other side is called the parasympathetic, and that is rest and digest. Okay, so resting and digesting all the things that are necessary for long-term survival over on the parasympathetic side. But we're talking about the sympathetic side, the fight or flight response. Now, it's important to know that both of these are equally as important. And the way that they really work in the body is exactly like your your gas pedal and your brake pedal in your car. The sympathetic is this that's the speeding up, that's the adrenaline rush, that's the stress response. That's somebody jumps out of a closet and scares you. That's the fight or flight response. That's the gas pedal. The other side is the parasympathetic. That's the brake pedal. That's going to slow things down. Rest and digest. That's going to take over, take control while you're sleeping. That's going to help break down your food. That's going to have long-term repair of damage. That is the brake pedal. And just like when you're driving, you know, if you picture going out for a drive or you picture, you know, if you took the last month of all the activity in your car and you analyze that gas and brake, that's kind of how your body reacts with the stress response and with the autonomic, the parasympathetic and sympathetic balance. Because if you're driving a car, you know, an automatic or, or either, you know, if you're driving it properly, you can't press the gas and the brake at the same time. It just, just doesn't work. You got to go back and forth. And that is the exact same thing with your body. It is always going back and forth. And the, the thing that's going to determine how much impact stress has on your long-term health is how quickly you can shut off that gas pedal. If you are running on gas all the time, you're just gunning, 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 just like a car. You're going to burn that thing out. You're going to burn your body out. So you gotta, you have to realize the difference between the fight or flight and the rest and digest. Today we're going to be talking exclusively about the fight or flight, but a lot of the stress management techniques we're going to get into in the next few episodes, they're going to be ways to activate that rest and digest, ways to step on that brake pedal, ways to slow that thing down, give your body a break and decrease your stress load. So that's really important first thing. But then let's get into that fight or flight response. What is the stress response? So the first thing that's going to happen in any stress response is there has to be a stressor, something that you see that causes you stress. You walk into a party, you see your ex 
husband or your ex-wife or your ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, right? Somebody you don't want to see. You know the feeling of – or somebody jumps out of a closet at you. Your hair stands up on end. You know what happens when you get a stress response. You see a letter in the mail that says last notice, IRS or you know something that you – or audit. <laughs> How about that one? That's going to elicit a stress response massively. Um, but that is what's happening. I'm going to use the analogy a lot today of you know we're here in Utah. I just, I just saw a moose two days ago from about 10 yards away. Uh, but I'm going to use the analogy of say you're hiking in the woods and you run into a bear. Okay, that's going to be a great, great analogy today for this stress response. So that is the first thing is the stressor. So what happens is then your body has what's called a primary response, which means it's going to release a cascade of hormones. Okay, so it's going to start to release what's called stress hormones. The first thing it's going to release are epinephrine and norepinephrine. That's, uh, you know, if you've ever known anybody with an allergy, they might carry an EpiPen, an epinephrine pen. Or if you're European or in the UK, they don't call it epinephrine or norepinephrine. They call it adrenaline and noradrenaline. So that's a much better way for us to understand. We've all heard of, you know, adrenaline junkies. We've all heard of an adrenaline rush. So adrenaline and noradrenaline are going to be released right away. You're also going to release dopamine, which is going to increase your alertness because, you know, if you're in the, in the woods and there's a bear, you better be on high alert, right? Uh, you're going to release cortisol, which is your body's number one stress hormone. You're going, to, you're going to release a couple others. DHEAS is one. Aldosterone is another. And that's one of the, that's the primary response, okay? So that's what's going to happen hormonally. Your amygdala in your brain is what's going to What's going to detect that stressor? That's the emotional part of your brain. That's going to send signals to your hypothalamus, which is your control center for your hormones, and it's going to start to release those hormones through the neuroendocrine system. Okay, so that's the first thing that happens. We all know the feeling. It's not necessarily important that you know the names of those hormones, but that's the stress response. But then what that does, what that causes is all this cascade of events because picture if I am in the woods and I run into a bear, and my body is smart. You know, if you've listened to the show before, you know your body's always doing the right thing at the right time for the right reasons, and it is so incredibly intelligent. So just think of this. The stress response is one of the most intelligent things in the world. If I'm out in the woods and I run into a bear, here's a couple things that my body's going to do. It's going to take blood flow away from my digestive system, away from my reproductive system, and put it out towards my muscles. Because if I'm going to fight or I'm going to flight, that's what my body's preparing me for. I'm either going to fight. If it's a bear, uh, I'm going to flight, right? If it's, a, if it's a person that I don't like, I'm probably going to flight too, but you, know, you might fight. So your body is preparing you for that. So first thing it's going to do, take, take blood flow away from uh, all those things that aren't important for your immediate survival. And it's going to focus on immediate survival. With the immediate survival, it's going to increase your immune system. Because if I'm about to get attacked by a bear, uh, my body's going to be ready to sustain some injuries, right? So it's going to increase my clotting factors. It's going to increase my cholesterol, HDL, and LDL. That's the stress response. It's going to increase my triglycerides. It's going Because if I'm going to get cut, you know, if a bear is going to take a swipe at me, my body's got to be ready to clot those things, right? So that's a good thing on a cut on the outside. You're going to scab up quickly. Bad thing inside your arteries when it comes to heart disease. It's going to increase inflammation, which inflammation is a good thing if I'm about to get swiped by a bear paw. But inflammation long term is a very, very bad thing that leads to disease. It's also going to raise my blood pressure. It's going to uh, raise my heart rate because if I'm about to take off running or I'm about to start fighting, I'm going to need both of those responses. So that's everything that's happening. If you picture that, that is the smartest thing in the world. And you picture it, it happens so quickly. It happens before your eyes oftentimes can even detect that it's happening. Okay, So that's the acute stress response. That's what's happening right away. It happens really quickly. That's why somebody is able to jump out of the way of a moving car before they even know what's happened. The body just responds and it just reacts. And that is genius. The problem is today is that our stress responses, our acute stress responses aren't acute anymore. They are sustained. They are happening for a long time. What's happening is we wake up in the morning and we're late for work 
right? So that's an immediate stress response right away. So we drive through the drive through and get, you know, some, some crappy sandwich for breakfast and a coffee. Uh, coffee is a stimulant, speeds up the stress response, speeds up the sympathetics, uh, stimulates them. So stress response, stress response. Then you're five minutes late to work. Maybe your boss yells at you. Stress response. Then at lunch, you get a flat tire. Stress response. Then you get home at the end of the day and you've got a letter in the mail that says uh, last notice, uh, bills unpaid or something. Stress response. Then you, you walk in after getting your mail, you get in a fight with your spouse. Stress response, stress response. So then what do you want to do? You want to sit down and you want to just veg on the couch and eat a gallon of ice cream because you're so dang stressed. Stress response, stress response, stress response. That's what's happening today. And so what that is called, that's a concept called allostasis or allostatic load. And what allostatic load is saying is that all of these responses, every time that your body has to respond to this stress response, it causes a long-term accumulation of wear and tear on the body. And it's like adding rocks to your backpack. So thank you, Dr. James Chestnut, for that term. You might have stolen it from somebody else. I don't know, but I heard it from you. Rocks in the backpack are all adding to your stress load. So that's the next thing I want to do is introduce this concept of allostatic load and why stress is such a big problem today because the stress response in and of itself doesn't lead to adverse health out outcomes. It's actually designed to protect the organism, to protect us, to protect our bodies from harmful effects. It's designed for the right reason. Exactly like if you get if you sprain your ankle, it's going to become inflamed. Inflammation isn't necessarily a bad thing, but prolonged it is, just like stress. It's actually great for you. And you know, if I do if I go to the gym and I want to get bigger and I want to do some curls, I have to put a stress on my arms. That's the only way that they're going to grow. That's the only way that our muscles grow, our bones grow. They respond to stress. And you know, you can have too much stress, right? You can break a leg. That's too much stress, more than the bone can handle. You can tear a bicep, more stress than the muscle can handle. But for the most part, stress is not always a bad thing. But each time, every single time the stress response is activated, your body has to make physiological adjustments, and over time, this leads to accumulated wear and tear. And that is the theory of allostatic load. That's the accumulated physiological wear and tear of how the organism is always in a process of maintaining stability and adapting itself to stress. Okay, so the guy that's the number one researcher in this for uh, in all time, his name is Bruce McEwen. He's developed this concept called allostatic load or allostasis. And that is rocks in the backpack. So that's what I want to look at next is, you know, what's what's stressing us? What's adding rocks to our backpack? And what can we do about it? The next few episodes after today's, we're really going to talk about, you know, the action steps. What can I do to decrease my stress? What can I do to put that brake pedal on? What can I do to take my foot off the gas pedal? Because like I said, your foot can't be on both, but you can either take your foot off the gas or you could put it on the brake. You could do either. They're both going to decrease that miles per hour, but how you can decrease your stress load. But what's stressing you? I want to talk about the five essentials because they are all stressing us. So essential number one, the mindset. That is, you know, what we're talking about, this, the stress response, the mental and emotional stress response. Now with that, it is really important to note that that is a choice and that is something that can be trained. If you are scared of spiders, you can train yourself to not be. If you are you know, constantly stressed because of uh, anxiety about something, you can train your brain not to be. But that is always a choice. We always have a choice of how we respond to something mentally. We don't necessarily have a choice of how we respond to things emotionally or, excuse me, uh, chemically or physically. You know, if you break a leg, you're, you don't have much choice in that. Or if you get mercury poisoning or something, you don't have much choice in that. But mentally and emotionally, you have a choice for that. So uh, the next few weeks, that's a lot of the things that we're going to talk about is what you can do for your mindset. Uh, I'll give you a little teaser right now that there are three things that really help break down and metabolize stress hormones. And those are uh, hard exercise, vigorous exercise, a deep night's sleep, 
is a great one, and laughter. Uh, all three of those are really, really good things that actually help break down stress hormones, help take your foot off the gas pedal there. But that is essential number one. That is stressing us. Essential number two is the nerve supply and the spine. And subluxation or spinal joint dysfunction is, in fact, a stressor. It adds to the stress load by the things that it does uh, just through hormonal responses based on decreased proprioception, decreased joint mobility causes hormone disruption, which is in fact part of an allostatic load. So that's another rock in the backpack. You're throwing rocks in the backpack. Unless you're trying to drown, rocks in the backpack make everything in life harder. Every single thing is just going to get harder and harder and harder as you add these rocks to your backpack. So sitting, you know, sitting is the new smoking. Uh, so and that's not just because your muscles aren't moving, but more importantly, because your joints aren't moving. And most importantly, because the joints of the spine aren't moving. Another thing with that is with the nerve supply is, you know, stress causes muscle tension. Muscle tension then creates spinal stress. So it's not only that spinal stress creates uh, muscle tension, but there's th a vicious cycle. They both create one and then one creates the other. And if you don't address one and you don't address the other, they're going to just keep causing each other. And I hope that makes sense. But when I ask patients, do you feel like you carry your stress around your shoulders? It's almost a rhetorical question because 95, 99% of patients always say, yes, absolutely. I carry my stress around my shoulders. When we get stressed, those muscles tighten up, they get tense. That has an impact on the joint mobility. That has an impact on the cervical curve. That has an impact on the forward head shift and on our posture. Everything rounds in and we get that, that stressed posture where our shoulders are raised and our heads are forward and you just look kind of timid or kind of scared. That creates massive, massive disruption in your health and it is a huge, big rock in your backpack, boulder in your backpack. Essential number three, your nutrition. Yeah, this is like I talked about with, you know, you have a really stressful day. So what do you reach for? You reach for a comfort food, but that in and of itself is a stressor. So this is another vicious, vicious cycle that you're stressed. So you eat some crap food, it makes you more stressed. So then you eat some more crap food. You've got to break the vicious cycle. You've got to eat foods that aren't adding to your stress load. So you've got to know what those are. You've got to eat anti-inflammatory foods. You've got to eat foods by God rather than foods by man. And you have to know what those foods are that are adding to your stress load. Go back and listen to the past podcast episodes. I do not have time to get into it today. We have plenty of past episodes Total food makeover, sugars, uh, info on fats. You know, fats are very anti-inflammatory, but some bad fats can be pro-inflammatory. So you want to go back and you want to listen to those to know what you're doing. You also want to go back and listen to the gut health workshop. You want to listen to the toxicity workshop. All these are rocks in your backpack. All these are adding to your allostatic load. So essential number four is exercise. And that's one, like I said, that breaks down stress hormones. It metabolizes circulating stress hormones. But, uh, you know, the opposite is true of when you don't exercise a vicious, vicious cycle. You get home, you're tired. Oh, I'm so stressed. I'm not going to exercise. Uh, then you get more stress from not exercising. Then the next day, you're less likely to exercise. So you've got to break the cycle with all five of these essentials because all five of them are adding to your allostatic load or adding rocks to your backpack. And each one of them has to be addressed in and of itself. Essential number five, another huge one, toxicity. So toxins cause a stress, you know, physical, chemical, and emotional stress, chemical stress coming from your food supply or coming from, you know, mercury or heavy metals or coming from, you know, your cleaners or your personal care products. Go back and listen to past episodes on where those toxins, where those chemical stressors are coming from, but it causes a stress response. And here's the thing is you might be a very peaceful person. You might be somebody who meditates and somebody who does yoga and somebody who is very consciously aware of your stress, but you don't know that you're putting constant chemical stress on yourself. You have to be aware of where these things are coming from because you can't address, you know, we always talk about the essentials. That means absolutely necessary and extremely important. You can't address two of them and not address the other three. You can't address four of them and not address the fifth. You have to be addressing 
all of these things and stop all of these vicious cycles from happening because they are causing allostatic load. And what allostatic load does is it causes all the diseases that we're talking about. Leads to cancer, leads to heart disease due to sustained inflammation, leads to diabetes, actually decreases cell sensitivity to insulin long term, uh, leads to neurodegenerative, promotes neurodegeneration, which may lead to cognitive decline and dementia, leads to uh, shortening of telomeres. You know, there's a Nobel Prize winner that, that is adamant that, you know, your body being in sustained sympathetic dominance or keeping that foot on the gas pedal too long is the number one thing that shortens the telomeres, which are the end of your DNA strands, and causes your cells to age and leads to an early death. She's adamant that the number one thing, the number one cause is sustained sympathetic dominance. So you have to be looking at all these things. Make sure that you stay tuned in the next couple weeks, the next couple episodes, because now we're going to give you the action steps. Hopefully today has changed the way that you think about health, changed the way that you think about the rocks in the backpack, changed the way that you think about your foot being on the brake or on the gas. You know, even if you just notice that, you know, I feel like my foot has been on the gas pedal. I've been hammering this gas pedal for a while. Maybe that's a sign to take a break. Maybe you just learned that, you know, even just taking some deep diaphragmatic breaths before you eat a meal can take your foot off the gas pedal, put your foot on the brake. But hopefully it's changed the way that you view your stress. That way we can change the way that you begin to manage your stress. So once again, as always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick with the Real Health Podcast. Make sure you stay tuned as we bring you some more action steps to get some rocks out of your backpack, decrease that load, decrease that allostatic stress load so that you can increase your health and get what we refer to as real health. So stay tuned next week. We'll talk to you soon. Have fun and make sure you go back into the archives and listen to some of those past episodes. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.